All right, that time again, time for another solo overnight in the woods. And today, we're gonna do a bucket list item, a poor man's stealth camp. Let's get to it. Okay, so here's a spot that I chose. We're off trail, we're surrounded by foliage, trees, bushes, plants, etc. And I found this tree, it's a willow tree that's actually broke off, but it's still alive. So there's no way that's gonna snap off in the night and kill me because it's pretty thick back here in the back and it's looking pretty good, it's pretty hefty. So here's what we're thinking. I'm gonna utilize the items I have in my kit and I mentioned it's gonna be a poor man stealth camp and turn this down tree into a shelter or a stealth camp for the night. Let's get to it. Now I've covered this several times in several videos. The main point of stealth camping is not to be seen, okay? Now that doesn't mean you can't have a fire, and that doesn't mean that you can't do the same things you do at a normal campsite. It just means you don't want to be seen. Not necessarily doing something illegal or you're on the run from the authorities. It means you might want to camp off grid or off trail and enjoy the outside or enjoy the great outdoors. So with that mindset, let's go ahead and get our camp set up we're going to get our tarp system set up first, and then we're going to go ahead and clear out the debris around this down tree and get her done. Okay, so I got this high vis orange paracord, and that sucks. Should be some dark color, like a dark olive drab color, like a dark green or a coyote tan to work with this willow. But we're gonna work with what we got. And I'm looking at this tree. I was fully prepared to drape a tarp over top of it. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, one and done. But what does that do? It actually shows that somebody was here. It also removes our overhead concealment. So I'm gonna go ahead and opt out of that option. I'm thinking I can run this around here and sort of make a ridge line underneath the down tree and then put the tarp over that. So let's give that a shot.
shove a simple stake in here for now and a stick to act as a tent stake and we got a plow point configuration underneath our tree And there you go, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So we didn't sacrifice any of our overhead cover or concealment. We still have the branches that grow off this half dead willow tree to give us the shade and protection. We also have the log for the cover aspect in case a widow maker were to break off meaning a dead branch and fall, it's gonna land on this log versus landing on me. We have one issue though. We have this hole right here, I wanna plug that and there's plenty of dead bark laying around. Okay, this is just too simple. Two shower curtains and some duct tape. If you're smaller, one shower curtain will suffice. Um, five bucks at a Walmart or free from your house. Can't beat that. Shelter set up, I'm thinking we'll go with a fire pit. I want that fire pit to be a Dakota fire hole. Why? Because in stealth camping, you can have a fire. As long as you don't have three foot flames coming off of it, you should be good to go. We wanna try and keep the flames contained within that bowl and build a nice dirt berm around it and allow for an air hole to suck that air in there to keep those coals hot all night. Whoa, right there. Found a couple worms. Top pocket find right there. Boom. Slope it back a little bit. We just suck that air right inside there through a tunnel into our fire pit. Oh, another worm. Okay, so our poor man's shelter is done. Got the mighty shower curtain right here. We have our Dakota fire hole. Now we need some chow. And for that, I want to bushcraft something. A poor man's fishing pole. So taking the rest of our paracord from our shelter, I'm gonna pull the inside strands out from my fishing line. I have a leader, a weight, and a swivel. All right, we're gonna start off here with a stick that's about six to eight feet in length. And I want the diameter no larger than the diameter of my thumb. If I took my thumb and I lifted it up and I looked at it, I don't want it any larger than that. Why? Because I want it to be able to flex. So taking the sleeve or the external piece of my paracord, I'm gonna go ahead and make a bite. And let it dangle off here a good inch and a half or so. And then starting at this end, I'm going to wrap the long end all the way to that bite.
Now my final wrap, I'm going to pass it through that loop, like so. And I'm going to pull on this end right here, and it will actually pull that loop down into here and tighten the entire wrap up, or whipping. so it's a good looking handle right there some added grip okay now for the top I mentioned I want to put a whipping up there as well I'm going to change that to something simple that we practice all the time an arbor knot Got him. Got him. Look at that guy right there. Got him. Got him. Got him. Come on, buddy. Let's go. Yes, sir. Pan size, baby. We got a sunfish smothered in butter, garlic and onions. Mm. Outstanding AF. Mm. Cut you all in the pew. I've been thinking about something long and hard here. I mentioned about a year and a half ago possibly doing a classroom, an online classroom. I couldn't find a platform that I liked. Um, nothing would tie into YouTube properly. Um, and the sad part is, what little circulation I get on videos, it's due to the infamous solo overnighters. It took me 10 years of doing just skills to get 100,000 subs. Three years of solo overnighters, I got 975,000 subs. See how that works? So, putting my money on what's going to be seen and heard, even though now it's less than 20%, it's still more than what a skills video would be. With that said, though, 
I'm thinking about going back to a midweek video for those individuals or subs or members who want to see skills. Now it will be some type of pay system like two bucks for this or one dollar for that or I got this one hour video on how to make a foundry. I want to elaborate on things that I can't elaborate on the overnighters and give you guys a chance to get step-by-step -step videos that are not monetized by YouTube, that there's no commercials in them to interrupt anything. But in order for me to do that, it's gotta be some type of paid system. I haven't figured that out yet. When I do, let me, I'll let you know. Um, just drop me a comment and let me know what you think about that. Because I know a lot of people are hitting me up, hey, can you show this, can you show that, can you talk about hygiene, can you show weapons? I can't do any of that on YouTube's platform. Otherwise, I'll demonetize the video and possibly demonetize my channel. But if the video was not monetized and you paid a different way, you know, real low, one buck, two bucks, five bucks, then I might be able to do what you guys want to see and get the videos out there. So mull that over. Like I said, this is in the um, infant stage. I'm thinking about something like this. Let me know in the comment section what you think. So everything seems to be working out fine. We have our Dakota fire hole and I can see right there, nice clean burn. Very little or no smoke. The flames are beneath the bowl and actually beneath the rim here, and it's working out perfect. We got our poor man's stealth shelter with two shower curtains, and we have our poor man's fishing rod, and we fed ourselves for the night, all for under about 18 bucks. So I'm happy with that. Working out well. Another bucket list item crossed off. Oh, 10 o'clock. Um, getting ready for bed here, and I'm thinking. What have I not done yet this year? Frog gig. There's frogs everywhere. There's creeks, there's ponds. I mean, there's bodies of water all over the place out here. I have not carved a frog gig, used a store-bought frog gig, cast a frog gig, forged a frog gig. We need to make a frog gig. So in the upcoming videos, we're going to do that. See, and that could be a lesson right there for one of these videos we're talking about of how to cast one or forge one or even carve one. Things like that. So think about that. Um, yeah, I got a lot of things happening now, so... I'll catch you on the morning. Five thirty ish, uh, and it's just now cooled off. Uh, the shelter is actually pretty huge, man. You probably get two people on here. nine lives tell you what okay so talk about the shelter poor man stealth camp in the woods two shower curtains and some duct tape um, duct tape you can find at your house shower curtains at your house this one right here was a gray a light gray color I wanted some kind of OD green but honestly there's grays found in the woods so uh, I don't mean aliens um, worked out pretty well this is a large plow point configuration underneath a down willow tree we had the protection in case Widowmakers fall on us. So, worked out well. Um, it's actually long enough, too. I can actually hunker down inside there if the rain came. So, outstanding. And then our poor man's fishing pole. We caught five fish and cooked two of them. Um, so, it does work. Inner strands of paracord and earthworms from our Dakota fire hole. So, happy with that. Worked out well. Another outstanding night in the woods. And there you go, Silver Knight building a poor man's stealth camp in the woods. More great things to come. With that, all the gear in my videos can be found in two places. One, my Amazon Influencer page, and two, my Self-Reliance Outfitters Influencer page. If you're interested in Corporal's Corner merchandise, that can be found on Teespring. All three links are found inside my description box, so please do me a favor. Hit that like and subscribe button, then ring that notification bell. Once you ring that bell, please select all notifications. As always, thank you for your comments, views, and support. Thanks for watching. Get out in the field, have some fun, I'm going to catch you.
next time.